Hey everyone, Adam here and today I want to talk about tube amps. So I'm relatively new to the tube amps and I love them, I think they are awesome, but it's not all rainbows and unicorns. So I wanted to mention some things that I don't like about them and I didn't re really realize until I got them and I got to play with them. And even as I was doing the research, I don't think anyone mentioned these. So yeah, here it goes. So the thing number one is that the process of, of using them is much more complicated. Before I got my first tube amp, the Ref G20, I had a combo from Fender, uh, you know, like a starter Fender combo. And that was a solid state amp, basically. There's on and off switch. So if I wanted to play a guitar, I would pick it up, plug in, turn, turn it on, and I can play. Then wh when I'm done, I will just turn it off, put the guitar down, and that's it. With the tube amps, it's <laughs> definitely not as simple. And basically, with the Rev G20, there are two switches on and off, and then the standby switch. With the Kraken, there is on and off switch on the back side of the amp, and then here there is a high, preheat, and low. So if I want to play any of, of them, I need to, on the Rev G20, I need to turn on the on and off switch, and then I have to wait 30 seconds, minute, you know, whatever, but there should be some time. I have to wait before I can turn on the standby. With the Kraken, I can simply turn it off and go into the high mode. I have, I have to make sure, even before I turn it on on the back side of the amp, that this switch here is in the central position, which is the preheat mode, and once I turn it on, I, again, I have to wait 30 seconds, minute or more. And that makes sure that the tubes, that they will get into their operational temperature. So basically, anytime you send the power into the tube, tubes, uh, they get like a shock. It's, it's not really, they don't like it. And over time, if you do it uh, 2,000 or 5,000 times, they can get damaged and they, they, will get, they will get damaged over time. But these standby switches and the preheat mode, it's kind of lowering the risk or mitigating that. And basically you are waiting for the tube to, to heat into its operational uh, temperature and then it's, it's safer or it's a bit more delicate for the, for the tube to send the power to it. So, yeah, you, you do that thing, you play, record, whatever, and then once you are finished, you, you can simply turn it off. Again, you need to first, here on the Rev G20, you need to turn off the standby switch, and with the Kraken, you need to put it into preheat, and you repeat the process. You wait 30 seconds, minute or more, and then you can turn it off completely. So yeah, that's, uh, quite complicated process and honestly it's even kind of like it's limiting the joy out of you know simple playing like let's say i have a five minutes uh, to spare and I, I just want to play one song and then i have to go then i i will think about like, like i will seriously think if i want to do this or i will just plug in my guitar into some uh, neural dsp plugin thing number two is the heat so here in this room, I have a lot of electronics. When I'm shooting videos, th there is light pointing at me. And all of that is producing quite a lot of heat. Currently, it's summer and it's not comfortable to be in this room and, and sh uh, record guitars or work or something. And when I'm using the tube amps, they produce even more heat because the tubes, they will get into their operational temperature and then they will get very hot. So even if you, if you touch the amp, it will get very hot. It won't burn your skin or anything like that, but it is very hot and it's adding a lot of heat into the equation. So that's another thing that I'm not really a fan of. And 
Last but not least is the noise. Depending on how high you set the master volume, the amp will produce a lot of, lot of noise. You know, when, when you are recording the guitars, so normally I would hear the guitars through these monitors that I'm using, and that's okay, but because the amp is here on this side, directly next to my ear, anytime I play, I will hear this noise coming out of the amp and it's very distracting. Like, it's really distracting. So I actually ended up setting the master volume to 11, but it's, you know, master volume is not, it's not simply a volume. Basically, it regulates the, the power that goes from the preamplifier into the power amplifier, and that has a huge effect on the, on the tone, on the gain and on the saturation. So it's, it's very important, and usually for every amp there is a sweet spot, where it sounds the best and that's where you want to have it. But yeah, if you, if you, go, if you go higher, then it, it can produce a lot of noise and it, it's very distracting. Of course, I could record with my headphones on, that could block some of the noise, but it's, recording with the headphones is not the same as, as hearing it coming out of the bigger studio uh, monitors. So yeah, these are the three things that I'm not a fan of or I don't like about the tube amp. But again, this video shouldn't discourage you. They are awesome, go for it. But maybe, maybe you are hesitating or you are deciding between uh, digital modelers. And in that case, uh, the things that I mentioned are definitely an argument in favor of digital modelers. So yeah something to consider. But that's it, that's the video. I hope you find it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.